Okay, so we are moving into the evaluation of a P, the PSAP section of this lesson. And so the first thing that we will need to do is to look at the PSAP that I have developed for myself. And all of this is based on all of the work that we've done over the, over the course of the lessons up until now. So we're in lesson eight right now. So across the first seven lessons, we've been focused on, you know, identifying our barriers, identifying our struggles, where are those pain points in our lives? What are the values that we hold near and dear to our heart? What, what are the, what's the conceptualized sense of self that I have? And how does that impact my day-to-day -day actions? Um, what are my values? Why do I care about certain things? What are the barriers that are impacting my ability to um, take the steps that I need to take to live a more valued and live a more fulfilling and meaningful life? And so, as I mentioned during the last lesson, there's not a set format. You know, it's not, there's not a template. It's like, okay, here's, here's the template, fill in these boxes, and then you'll have a, you know, planned that you can execute upon and you'll be, you know, everything will be hunky-dory. Um, this is a working document. And so, you know, my form is just one form and it's a work in progress because just like you all, this isn't something that I've been, you know, doing for years and years and years that I've been trained to and I'm a master of. This is something that I think is very valuable. It's a very valuable process. I've done work in this area um, on a personal level and on a professional level in, you know, in some regard. But the reality is, is that this is, this is a strategy that will help us all be more effective and personally and professionally. And then it's also something that we can take to our, to, into our personal lives and into our professional lives to help others. Because as we're going out into the world and we're seeing people in action, just human beings on a day-to-day -day basis, whether you know, they're behavior analysts or other professionals or friends or family members, it is so common to see people who say one thing about who they are and what they're about, and then act in a completely different way. And this is, you know, as we've learned, this is a normal part of the human experience. Um, but we are not, um, we are not just uh, left to the will of, you know, the will of the universe. And we just, you know, sit back and let ourselves be guided by whatever may be, will be it. If we have, if we want to improve and we want to live a valued life and we want to leave a legacy and we want to improve the lives of others. And we want, you know, we, we want all of these things. We want our lives to be about certain things. It's critical that we're able to do this for, follow this process for ourselves, as well as um, uh, provide some guidance and feedback and support to others who, whose lives would also benefit from this process, which I would argue is every human on this planet would bene could benefit from this process. <clears throat> So I am going to jump out of this presentation and jump to the script that, that is posted um, within the lesson. And so this is where you'll uh, be able to find my um, strategic action plan. Okay, so um, let me open up the chat just okay so can i just get a quick check to make sure that you can see my full screen um that shows the action plan all i see is a black screen with a white bar across the middle okay that was what i was afraid was happening now i can see it oh so i don't know if maybe it just loaded slow 
I think that might have been the problem because I didn't do anything differently <laughs> except kind of hover over something. Okay. All right. So, um, as I mentioned, I will scroll through this quickly and then we'll go back to the top and talk through each of the sections. So the first section is the self-assessment. And in this section, I've created a table that was based on um, some of the guidance from a liberated mind and get out of your mind and into your life, um, where we have each value domain, the values that I have in regard to those domains, a rating of the importance of those domains to me personally, and then a rating of my current actions in regard to, those, to that value domain. Okay, and then I have a summary, and then there's the values and barriers section. So then for each of those value areas, um that i want to specifically target so this isn't for every single value area this is then pulling out those specific things that i want to target um, a clarification of the values in those areas a um, a listing of the barriers that i have in those areas um, and then the next section is the long and short-term goals and again, you'll note, as we go through it, you'll notice that these are pulled from the different, uh, the different activities that we've done over the past seven lessons. So long and short-term goals are included, action plans are included, a plan of execution, so what this is actually gonna look like on a day-to-day -day basis, and then a plan for progress monitoring. Okay, so we'll go back up and go through the plan section by section. <clears throat> okay, so what I've done is for each of the 12 domains, I pulled from the values lesson, uh, the description and of those values that I developed and I pulled out the keywords. So I think it's really important to um, think about how we can summarize things in a clear and concise manner um, and not just, you know, have tons of information that then needs to be sifted and sorted through again. As behavior analysts, we know that it is important to be able to quickly and easily interpret and explain data um, and explain information in a way that is easy to understand. This not only applies to when we are describing assessment results to somebody else, but it's also, you know, we can apply anything that we can apply to somebody else, we can apply to ourselves. And this gives us a, a clear, like a clean and easy way to describe the extent of the challenges that we're having. Um, and then the, the summary section you'll see kind of pulls this, kind of pulls this apart even further. So we have the domain, the specific values within each of those domains, a rating of the importance, and the ratings of um, the actions, with the, the scale being on one to 10. So one would be, it's, you know, it's not important at all, 10 being it's very important, and then the current state of your actions, the rating of one to 10 being, one being that you're not at all in alignment with your values, and a 10 being you're in complete, you know, 100% alignment with your values. So for me, well, I'll go through each of those do these domains. So in the area of marriage, I value open and honest communication, calmness, constantly striving for improvement, and um, feelings of love and laughter. My importance rating on this is 10. I highly value my marriage, and I highly value taking action to maintain um, the quality of that relationship. In regard to my actions, I feel as though this is, this is about a nine. I feel like, you know, I have a really solid marriage. 
we're, you know, we're not perfect by any means, but we're constantly striving for improvement. We work really well together. Um, when we have challenges, we're able to talk through them, work out a solution, and move forward in a positive way. And so this is an area where I feel as though my actions and my, um, my actions are in pretty good alignment with my value in this area. As with anything, it's not 100% perfect, um, and, but um, things, are, things are improving on a daily basis. In regard to parenting, I believe that um, parent, uh, in the area of parenting, I highly value um, so, you know, um, high quality education across domains. So not only in terms of academics, but self-help and independence and um, you know, taking care of a household and um, creating healthy, happy, and stable environments and making sure that parents and families have the supports that they need to nurture and grow their families um, and that parents are given the opportunity and the encouragement and the support to share their values with their children. Um, this is something that I value a lot, but it's not something that I take a lot of action in regard to. So I'm not a parent. I don't do any parent training anymore. I work at a school, but my role isn't to really um, uh, engage with the parents a lot. And so, you know, this is a little bit difficult for me in this role because I'm, you know, this is something that I value a lot, but it's not something that I'm currently actively doing anything in regard to. In relationship to um, the family domain, I really value close relationships with family making having regular contact with family members engaging in deep and meaningful conversations and really getting to know people in my family um, as i've talked about before this isn't something that i've um, done a lot of and hasn't really been fostered or facilitated and supported within my family but it is something that i value greatly so again i've given this an importance level of 10 but my actions are about a five um, because, because of the challenges that, and, um, struggles that we've had within our family within the past four years, um, this has been an area that I haven't been able to, or willing to put in a lot of effort, um, and emphasis. And there's some things that I'm, you know, I'm starting to, I'm starting to do, I'm starting to reach out more and try to rebuild some of those connections. And I'm finding um, you know, deeper relationships with people in within my family that I didn't, um, that haven't been a, a big focus of my attention in the past. And I'm, you know, getting a lot of benefit out of that. Um, but again, something I value highly, but not something that um, you would be able to tell that necessarily from the actions that I'm taking on a regular basis. In regard to social relationships, I, I value deep friendships, reciprocated feelings, um, truly knowing others and being known um, by others, and maintaining relationships over time. So not just, you know, having short interactions, but really having long-term, deep relationships that are caring and um, full, of, full of joy. So again, I value this area very highly, um, but in terms of my actions, not, you know, I haven't been doing things that have been 100% in accordance with this, um, with this area. Um, in relation to my career, I'm really, um, I really am focused on helping people in my, compu my community doing things that matter. So I want to make sure that my actions are meaningful and that they're making a difference in my, in my life and the lives of others. I want to spread peace, love, and joy throughout the, you know, throughout the world um, in which I find myself. Um, and I have a deep faith and hope in the power of behavioral science to positively impact the world. 
I highly value this area. Again, it's a 10. And I would say that I would rate myself about a seven. I feel like this is an area that I have put some work into and that is um, you know, the core of my daily actions. Um, but I'm not doing everything that I want to do and I'm not having the full impact that I want to have or that I know I'm capable of making. Um, so I would rate this a seven in terms of my actions in, re um, in relation to this value area. In the area of education, I really, because of the work and the long-term goals that we have and this big, you know, the vision that we have for our lives and um, the work that we want to do within this community, um, you know, the island community that we're on and then within the community of behavior analysts and then even further um, into society in general, um, you know, I, there are skills that I need to develop. I value skills related to business management and community management and substance and domestic abuse treatment. Um, but these aren't areas that I'm a master in um, and have, you know, would say are completely under my belt in regard to my core areas of competence. And so, again, while I value this highly, my actions would be rated a five because I'm not, I'm not there yet. I'm not consistently taking actions to develop myself in these areas. I've done some things, um, but not to the extent that will take me where I'm ready to make the leap to the next point in my life. Um, recreation is another important area for me. I highly value outdoor activities and going camping and hiking and biking and kayaking and taking, you know, taking pictures and going fishing and exploring. Um, but due to life circumstances and prioritization of other things, this hasn't been something that I've been able to spend a lot of time doing. And so, you know, my actions are not, um, are not, reflective of this value on a regular basis, but it's something that I care very deeply about and want to do more of because I know that it brings me great, um, a great sense of personal satisfaction. It is also, you know, there are also things that I will, I can do with others, um, with my husband and with friends um, that, you know, also add to you know, the idea that these things bring joy, to my life and like re-energize me and rejuvenate me and give me even more passion and energy for the more difficult work that I have to do, that I want to do. In regard to spirituality, I value um, human connection. So connecting with others, connecting with myself, really knowing who I am and understanding my place in the universe and how everything is interdependent. Um, you know, I have this deep yearning for a sense of purpose and meaning in my life. And what I've found is that this connection, so the connection to myself, an understanding of where kind of who I am and wh what I'm all about, um, and that provides me with this great internal source of energy um, because it's my life meaning. And once I, once I was able to connect with that in a deep way, I can use that to recharge my batteries and come, you know, come into contact with, you know, who am I, what am I about, what am I doing and what actions am I taking um, or what can I take? And so I value this area highly. And I also feel as though, on a day-to-day -day basis, I am much more able to, um, to live in accordance with this value. And this has really come through the work of um, diffusion and mindfulness and um, really defining my, myself, you know, so, and, you know, breaking away from that um, entanglement with the, my conceptualized sense of self and really coming into contact and defining who I am as a person and what I want my life to be about. Um, and that's been 
a lot of work that I've done over the past four years to really hone in on that. Um, in relation to community, I value and I want to support others on their journey from a life of pain and suffering to living healthy, happy, and fulfilling lives. This is something that's really important to me. I see so much and I'm, you know, I, I perceive so much pain and suffering in the lives of others. And it gives me a reason, um, a reason to keep going because I, I know that the work that I'm doing and the application of behavioral science and, you know, real concrete strategies that are um, based in the science of behavior and learning can help people live much more healthy, happy, and fulfilling lives. And so, you know, I am motivated to share that with others and support others and encourage and motivate and inspire. Um, this is a high value area, but another area in which, you know, I need to, there are things that I need to do or things that I want to do to live more in accordance with this value on a day-to-day -day basis. <clears throat> For my, in, in my areas of well-being, the things that I really value, I really value yoga and meditation, spending time outside, breathing fresh air and, you know, being with nature, drinking more clean water. So not um, chemically, uh, not chemically um, treated water. And I, you know, I value eating locally sourced food and things that are nutritious um, as opposed to just empty, um, empty calories. So this is a, a high value area, but one that I rated a six um, because while, um, you know, I have a fairly regular yoga practice and I do have a, you know, I have a very regular meditation practice. I don't spend very much time outside. I do drink um, clean water. Um, we have a, you know, local springs where we get our water as opposed to um, be having to drink chemically treated water. And I've gotten so used to drinking um, water from the spring that when I do have to drink water from, let's say, the school where they have to treat, you know, due to um, regulations, they have to treat their water chemically. I can't even drink it, um, uh, which is, you know, which is a good, a good thing, <laughs> I suppose, um, because my body is, you know, my body is selecting um, the more, you know, the cleaner, healthier water. Um, and while I want to eat more locally sourced food and I want to eat more nutritious food, the reality is that in this area where we live, um, food is expensive and we've been in the winter months. And so um, locally sor sourced food is you know, few and far between um, things to come by. And I haven't done yet an excellent job of putting up food for the winter. Um, and living in rural Alaska, this is something that, um, you know, you have to plan for and you have to think about, you know, what are you going to need and how, what, how are you going to sustain yourself over, you know, over these months where there's nothing to harvest. And so as spring is right around the corner and, you know, the sun's starting to come out and we're, you know, we're going to see, start seeing some spring growth. Um, I'm really, you know, wanting to, um, put some more emphasis and put some more effort into how I can make this more of a reality for myself. Um, in relation to the environment, uh, you know, the major issues that, that I think about when I take time to think about the environment and environmental health and sustainability is the, you know, the health of the ocean to make sure, you know, making sure that it's free from pollution, uh, sustainable fisheries, the forest is healthy and, you know, we're using sustainable logging practices. I want, you know, want to make sure that I have access to clean water and that other people um, in my life have access to clean water and that we have access to clean and renewable energy sources. And again, while these things are, you know, are very important to me on the surface level, my, I'm, there's nothing that I'm, not, that I'm doing 
in relation to those um, areas, even in so far as you know, staying on top of the main the the major um, um, things in the you know news or in legislation that are related to these. These are not and not a topic that I really have had the time to delve into more deeply. So I would definitely rate myself a two in that area. Um, and then finally, in relation to creativity, um, my creative, you know, creative ex expression is really important to me. So playing the piano, singing, dancing, writing, um, photography, and designing clothes. Um, again, highly important to me um, and something that I have been actively working to incorporate more into my life. And so um, I would rate this, a, I would rate this a six. And so as you can see, there's some that were rated highly. So they're all rated as highly important. Um, and then in terms of valued or actions and in relation to those values, there was a variety of scores. And so similarly to how you might look at evaluation or assessment data on an individual student where you would look at the, look at a, the discrepancy and use that discrepancy to identify the areas that are were good, we don't have any challenges, the areas which are, you know, um, are your, in which you're moderately affected or have some challenges, and the areas in which you have major challenges. This is the same type of discrepancy model that I have um, incorporated into my, into my PSAP. So, from my perspective, um, and this is not going to be the same for everybody, and neither, nor should it be, but from my perspective, I find all of these value areas to be of high importance. There are things within each area that I highly value and that I care about deeply. Um, but right now, I'm doing the best that I can with the resources that I have. If there's nothing... Um, I'm not beating myself up over being a two in some areas. It is, it is just what it is. Um, and this is, you know, this is something that has been truly liberating for me in my life because, you know, in the past, I've spent so much time perseverating over my, those discrepancies or those inadequacies that, you know, I found myself stuck and not taking action. So it's kind of, you know, in that rumination cycle where it's like, okay, well, this is a problem. And then, oh, now like this is also a problem. And so I'm just going to keep thinking about and worrying about all of those things and all of the challenges that, um, that I'm having, as opposed to being like understanding that those are a problem, recognizing them, accepting them, and then committing to taking action to overcome them. So the three areas in my life that I would say I feel good, I feel good about where I'm at, those are in relation to my marriage, my spirituality, and my career. So over the past four years, I have placed a lot of emphasis and put a lot of effort into goals and actions related to these three areas. And so it makes sense that I'm, you know, those areas are ones of higher alignment for me. Um, because I've put that effort in. And now I'm at a point in my life where, um, you, know, I, you know, I still have to actively work to maintain the progress that I have made in these areas, but the amount of effort and the amount of resources that I have to put into maintaining the, that progress is lower, right? So when I first was working on these areas. My response effort was high um, because the, the discrepancy was larger and I had more challenges. But as I practiced new behavior patterns and practiced new habits and worked on skills and talked about, you know, you know, communicated openly and honestly with myself and with others, Every day, it became easier and easier and easier to, um, to maintain those behavior patterns. So I'm at a point in my life where my goals and objectives in relation to these areas are pretty much on a, you know, they're on a maintenance plan. I have some things that I'm going to be working on um, 
but it's not something that I feel needs a, you know, a, an intense plan of, you know, here's what I'm, here's what I'm going to do. At some point, um, I, you know, I want to incorporate into this PSAP some of those other goals and it will be important to do that. But as with, <laughs> as with the, um, the individuals with whom we work um, or the systems in which we work, if we, um, it's important to prioritize where we're going to put our energy and our attention. And if there are things that are, that are just doing good and we're, you know, we're, we're, we've made progress and we're on track, you know, I'm not going to put a lot of thought into that. I'm going to let those processes run in the background. You know, your brain is a really amazing personal assistant. And so, you know, just let your brain and your body um, go on autopilot in regard to those, in regard to those values. They'll still check, you know, we'll still check in on them regularly, um, but I'm not going to put a lot of emphasis and effort into the planning and tracking of those areas because we can only do so much with the resources that we have available. Um, the, uh, the two areas in my life which have the largest discrepancy, okay, so you'll notice I went from the ones that have the smallest discrepancy, there's only like a one or two point difference, to the ones that have the largest discrepancy, these were the ones that have like a seven or eight point difference, um, or eight or nine, you know, eight or nine point difference. These are the areas related to parenting and the environment. And for me, and the, this discrepancy is so big, and the, the issues within these areas, the actions that I could take, they're not a, they're not a high priority. Um, you know, they matter. I value these areas. There's things, there are things that I really care about, and there are things that I, you know, there are things that I um, could do. But again, I can't focus on so many things. I have to have some criteria for prioritizing. So my, my criteria for prioritization is if it's like, if the discrepancy is super big, I'm not even going to like, you know, if an, if an opportunity comes up to, you know, related to parenting or one of my, you know, values related to that or advocating to environmental issues, um, I'll take advantage of the ones advantage of the ones that I can, but I am not going to be seeking out opportunities or actively planning and putting these things into my schedule into my into my plan, um, because it's not it's not something that I um, have the time or the energy to commit to taking specific actions. And then finally, the um, we're, I'm looking now at those areas that are right in the middle where I have a high value and I have a moderate level of discrepancy. So there's a you know, four or five point discrepancy between my ideal and where I'm at and how, you know, how I am functioning within that area. And so those areas that I identified in that, sec in the, that um, kind of middle level were my values related to family, social and friends, education, recreation, community, well-being, and creativity. Well, there are seven domains. And again, it's important to, for yourself, be okay <laughs> with some things. Um, just, you know, you don't have to tackle everything all at once. And the reality is that you can't tackle everything all at once. And so this is where our strategies related to diffusion and acceptance um, and you know, our conceptualized sense of self really come in handy because you know, we can have a discrepancy. We can care really deeply and not be doing that great in an area or just be doing okay and, and just be okay and just be okay with it. And, you know, it's fine. You're living, nobody's dying. We're, you know, we can still live a fulfilling life and take action that's important without 
concerning ourselves with the things that we're not doing. Um, because if we're always focused on the things that we're not doing or the things that we need to stop doing, as opposed to, you know, the actions that we can take to live a more fulfilling life, that's when we get kind of bogged down in the weeds and get stuck in that entangled thought, thought and action patterns. So of the seven areas that I identified as, you know, I'm, I'm doing okay in, um, I chose four on which to focus. And those are the areas of social, uh, recreation, community, and creativity. Um, and the other ones we'll just leave for, um, leave for another day. Okay. So when then you move on to the values and barriers section, again, we're just taking, just focusing on those values, which you've determined for yourself and which for in my plan, which I've determined for myself are the ones that I, I struggle with and the ones that I want to or am motivated to address right now. At, at this point in my life, I have the resources, you know, I only have so many resources and I can dedicate them to only so many things. And so these are the things that I've decided in my life in, in the context in which I'm currently living, I have the resources and the desire to, um, to work on them and take some specific actions to live more in accordance with those values and, and focus on moving my, um, you know, moving my action rating closer to my importance rating. Okay. <clears throat> so in kind of review and recap in relation to the social domain, I really want to focus on developing and maintaining relationships um, with people who are both near to me, so close to me in my immediate community, and also in a distant way. So people who I've had friendships and relationships with um, for a long time, you know, from childhood, and then also establishing and maintaining relationships with other professionals. Um, and, um, you know, I want to have relationships which are deep and meaningful and reciprocal. I want to, um, you know, host and attend more events. This is something that I used to do a lot um, in, you know, in my previous life, um, but haven't done as much since we've been um, here and experiencing the challenges that we've been cha experiencing. I want to connect more with others. And I really want to be, you know, at the end of the day, I want to feel as though I'm bringing joy to the lives of others. And the barriers that I have in relation to those are there, it's a lot of internal verbal dialogue um, that I get, you know, that I get fused with. And I tend to use as excuses for not doing things. And so these include thoughts related to, you know, nobody caring about me, I'm boring and uninteresting, there's no, you know, nobody really wants to hang out with me, they're just inviting me um, due to obligation, I'm, you know, I have, you know, deep sense of feeling um, isolated and alone and depressed and hating myself and my life, um, feeling super disconnected. Um, not really knowing how to be a good friend and, um, you know, feeling like things are going to be overwhelming. And so in addition to these thoughts that I have, those thoughts are also paired with this, um, these physiological responses that are indicators of stress and anxiety. So when I put myself in these situations, or I do something, or I don't do something, that a lot of times I'll get the, you know, that, um, that rush of adrenaline, where it's, you know, you, my heart tightens, my stomach is clenched, I'm, you know, have a hard time breathing, I might cry. And it's, you know, this um, kind of internal 
stress response with some external uh, indicators. Um, but those are, those are the barriers which have, you know, th that physiological response paired with these thoughts have been the major driving force for my experiential avoidance. So I avoid reaching out to people because I don't want to feel rejected. I don't want to feel as though I'm being fake and people don't really know me because I can't be open and honest. Um, you know, I want to attend social events, but you know, I don't always know everybody that's there and it's hard for me to establish new relationships with people. Um, or yeah, establish relationships with new people and, you know, know what to say. Like, you know, I, I always thought that it was really funny in, in just like a, you know, fun in a weird way that, you know, my, in my career, I would have to, you know, one of our goals was to teach social communication. And I would always have this thought in the back of my head, like, I don't even know how to have conversations. <laughs> with people how in the heck am I supposed to be teaching somebody how to have a conversation um, and so you know these are things that I really I I want to get better at because I you know I struggle with I struggle with it um, but I also see other people struggle with these same things and so um, you know I, I want to figure out how to overcome these barriers um, my second, uh, the second value in area in relation to um, recreation. So, I, you know, I value outdoor adventures. I want to take more of them. I want to enjoy nature more. I want to go camping and hiking and kayaking and fishing and driving um, and rock climbing and exploring um, and really connect with nature, really relax and, you know, reconnect with my husband on different, on a different level as opposed, you know, in, in outside of the uh, work that we do on a day to day basis. And I want to utilize natural resources more. And so, you know, my excuses, my internal verbal dialogue always has to do with, you know, that I don't have time. There's better things that I, you know, that I can use my time for. I have too much work. I can't give into those urges. Um, you know, I don't want to be seen as somebody who's, you know, shirking their responsibilities and, you know, being lazy and not doing the, you know, important work. Um, you know, not being, not being one of those people I see, you know, I see people out in my, in my world who, you know, they go and do all of these things all the time. And I, I don't think of them as lazy, but for some reason I have this verbal dialogue that it's like, if I were to, you know. I'm supposed to be the responsible one. And so if I were to take time off from the work, you know, the important work that I have to do, then, you know, something's wrong with me or somebody's going to be judging me for doing that, which is, you know, I realize that that's ridiculous, but, um, you know, can't always control what your, what your, uh, um, dictator within says to you, you know, I've learned how to more, um, fluently thank Frank for his input and, you know, um, and then continue acting in any way. Um, but it's not easy because I do have this deep sense of duty and responsibility that I must, and, you know, if, if it's not for me, nobody else, you know, this isn't going to get done. And, you know, where, where would we be? Where would the world we be without me? Which again, I realize is, is a ridiculous thought. Um, but one that I have a lot. Um, so, you know, these things I, you know, I described in another lesson, um, my experience when I was at a training and, you know, after hours, there was an opportunity for me to go rock climbing. And it was my first time that I had truly come in deep, in deep contact with that excuse within me that was, you know, that I don't have time, I don't have money, I'm, you know, I, you know, I don't really even know how to rock climb, I'm not good at that, so why am I gonna put myself out there? And I was able to, you know, thank Frank for his input and act even, even in, in you know, in spite of the, that verbal dialogue, in spite of the physiological response I had when that, you know, the diatribe started, and, you know, I was able to accept that 
and continue acting in accordance with my values even with it and was you know greatly rewarded for um, taking that chance um, in regard to community I want to be able to teach others to be open, centered, and engaged. I want to support others on their journey towards a healthy, happy, and fulfilling life. I want to um, be able to provide substance and domestic abuse treatment. It's not within my scope of competence, but it's something that I feel very deeply is important for the community in which I function, communities in which I function, um, and, and that you know, I feel strongly that I have a role to play in not only my community, but in the development of more effect effective treatment options based on um, behavior science. Um, and then I also want to um, affect the economic development and business development within um, my, my, the island community in which I live. Um, as well as the other the other communities in which I function. So you know my my verbal dialogue related to this and you know things that I've thought and have inhibited me from taking action when I should have taken action um, is you know the idea around not really being part of any community and not having a voice, not ha not being important enough to be listened to. Um, you know, the problems being too big for me and not, you know, me not having um, a community of people with whom I am, you know, by, with whom I'm surrounded that we can do this work together. And so, you know, it kind of goes back to that feeling of being alone, you know, like I, I have these ideas, but I'm really a broken person. I don't have any allies. And so I might as well just, you know, not do anything because there's really nothing that little old me can do. Um, which is, you know, that has again inhibited me from taking taking action on a regular basis. Um, in regard to creativity, I want to, I want to be able to share my story in the service of inspiring others. So, you know, I've been some, through some very challenging times throughout my whole entire life. Um, and I know that there are others who have experienced similar things to me. Um, but I also know that there are people in this world who have experienced this similar things to me, but don't have a foundational understanding of um, behavioral science and how, it can, how we can use um, strategies based on the science to effectively change patterns of behavior. And so that causes people um, to feel um, powerless and hopeless. And the, you know, these are societal messages that they've been surrounded with as well. And so you know, by me being able to share my story and inspire, and uh, my intent and my, my goal and hope is that I am able to inspire, encourage, and empower others to make changes in their in their own lives because you know once they realize that you know they're not just a victim of their circumstances and you know it's not nobody else is to blame for the problems that you have we have the responsibility and the and the ability to take effective action um, and I really want to do this through my create my creative expression because I realize that people you know, that is, a, that is a kind of universal way to connect with other humans through music and dance and photography and shareable content. Um, you know, I myself want to feel more grounded and connected and I want to help others feel more grounded and connected through the sharing of this content. Um, and, you know, creating creating these things provides me with energy and motivation and fills me with a sense of peace love and joy and again i also want to share that with others so others can share in those experiences with me um, my barriers have been related to you know a deep sense of self-doubt and um you know the verbal dialogue that goes along with 
um, you know, putting yourself out there on the world stage and sharing um, these, you know, deep bits of yourself with the world. And so, you know, I haven't shared myself with the world because I, you know, I didn't think that I was good enough. You know, I can't play, I can't play the piano well enough. I can't sing well enough. I can't, you know, I'm not creating anything that anybody is going to actually like. And so I'm not going to put myself out there. Um, you know, I'm not worthy of being noticed or even when I go to put myself out there, there's so much anxiety that comes with the thoughts around being judged or criticized or ridiculed or embarrassed, you know, or that it, that has such a, you know, a dampening and a deadening effect on motivation to um, continue. It's that, you know, abolishing operation of that, uh, that fear of what, you know, what might happen, what could, what pain and suffering could I experience? Um, and, you know, those things are, can get so worked up in our minds that we avoid doing things altogether. Um, so these four, these four value areas, those again were ones that I had a moderate discrepancy in, and that I prioritized out of the, li the larger list of areas in which I had a moderate discrepancy. And so then the next section of the PSAP pulls these, um, uh, pulls these values in as compass points. So this is the direction I want to go in. I recognize that there are going to be these barriers along the, along the way. Um, and then because I know that, because I'm in touch with my values and because I know that I have the his, this history of these barriers, which have in the past stopped me from acting in accordance with my values, I can prepare. I can be proactively planning for the eventuality that these problems are going to be coming up. Because just because I have clarified my values and I'm working every day to act in accordance with them doesn't mean that it's going to be all, you know, easy peasy, lemon squeezy from here on out. It's going to be hard. But the most important things in life are difficult, but are worth the effort in the end if they're, they are in direct accordance with your values. And so we can all think back to times in our lives when we have worked really, really hard and, you know, finally accomplished that goal for which we were, you know, dedicated our blood, sweat, and tears to, and then we've accomplished that goal and realized that it wasn't all it was cracked up to be. And that feeling right there is because it wasn't necessarily, in, or probably not at all, in line with your deeply deepest held values. And now that we know that the core of what we should do, the first step is to get in alignment, to understand who we are as individuals and what we want, what we want our lives to be about. Now that we know that, we can create goals that are much more targeted to addressing our core deficits our core discrepancies. Um, because where I found myself, and I know many of you have found, your, found yourself in these, in these times as well, the goals that I had, my, had for myself were related to my conceptualized sense of self, the person that I thought other people expected me to be. And at the end of the day, those goals were significantly unfulfilling. Um, and while, you know, on the outside, looking in a person might might have said oh wow that abby she's pretty successful um if i you know i did not also feel that um same level of success which tells me and should tell you as well that um there's you know something different needs to be done um in order in to live more in accordance with these values so I took these four value areas and I, I created three overarching goals for myself in relation to these areas. So in relation to 
um, the values I have around community and helping others, um, I set up an overarching goal um, that will require me to um, stand up and speak up in a way that is caring and compassionate when there's a need to advocate for myself and others and then take further steps if, if necessary. So if you go back to um, this area of, communi of community, my values are to teach others to be open, centered, and engaged. My value, I have values around supporting people on their journey towards healthy, happy, and fulfilling lives. I value as a, you know, in relation to my community, being able to um, provide or help other, you know, help people find access to effective substance and domestic abuse treatment. And I highly value um, economic development and small business development to help people go from, you know, this, you know, this life that they're living, feeling unfulfilled to really fulfilling their life purpose and living a life of value. And so my goal is to advocate, advocate for myself attaining these goals and help others ad, you know, advocate for others and then teach others to advocate for themselves. And so um, last time, our, during our last lesson, we broke down kind of the 10 year, five year and two year goals. And so the way that I've, kind of, I've conceptualized this, again, there's no right way to do this. If this is just some, this is, this made most sense to me for my goals. And so I'm providing it as a model in the, um, in the effort of um, giving you some inspiration for creation and development of your own piece app. So the way that I broke this down was for each overarching goal area, so kind of major goal, um, which is a, a more of a like a, a guidepost along the way towards that, you know, the, the values that I hold deeply. Um, I set a, you know, a longer term goal for 10 years. So in 10 years, I plan to be living a more peaceful life in which I am confident standing up and speaking up when needed. So there will be no more hesitation. When I see something, I will say something and I will, you know, uh, not hesitate. I will be able to, you know, overcome and just move past that feeling of anxiety that creeps up when I, when I feel like there's something that needs to be said, which generally prevents me from saying things. Um, so in 10 years, I plan on being all done with hesitation, all done with not saying what needs to be said and um, taking action for myself and others. So that's that big long-term, uh, you know, long-term goal. Um, in five years, I plan on being in a place where I can effectively support others on their path towards recovery from some substance and domestic abuse. And then in two years, kind of a closer goal to where we are right now, um, I plan to be engaging in further self-study in relation to my um, areas of critical skill development that will get me closer to these more long-term goals. And then for, so for that kind of more intermediate to short-term goal, I have developed um, four uh, shorter term goals or objectives in relation to this two-year goal. So the four things that I am committed to doing um, and committed to achieving over the next two years are to um, develop and teach courses based on key books related to topics and skills of interest that would benefit, um, be of benefit to myself and others. So that is where we are right now, Action for a Peaceful World, uh, you know, cruising with Babs, here we are learning together, studying um, more deeply ourselves and some, uh, you know, behaviorally based texts um, to guide our self-improvement. Um, my other goal is to have regular conversations with others about 
their individual challenges and skills they would like to develop. So this is a way for me to not only um, gather information, but to connect with others and to learn from others and to kind of do some uh, pilot work in regard to the things that are most needed within this community, the island community and within the behavior analytic and professional community. Um, it comes through conversations. And again, this is something that is not comfortable for me, but something that I know is important and will in the end be of great value to myself and others. I also have a goal to continue reading and sharing new texts regularly that are related to key areas of personal and professional development. This is, will both be both in the form of journal articles as well as printed books. Um, and then finally, um, one of my, my final goal in regard to this um, overarching goal area and value area of community is that I will continue writing blog posts and creating short videos related to important advocacy topic, topics to engage the community in ongoing discussions about these areas. Um, so my last two goals, I've kind of, they're a, um, a combination of value areas because there was, a lot of times what you'll find is that there's overlap. So, you know, I value creativity and social and friendships. And that to me, those, my values in those two areas meshed well together and felt very, um, you know, like I could pull that into one goal and, um, and plan that out a little bit more in depth. So I, I want to encourage you to take that liberty. This doesn't have to be like, I've got to have, you know, if I'm going to work on community, it's got to be just one goal about community. Combine them. Give yourself some freedom and flexibility. This is your plan. This is your life. You have your values and you know what you want. Um, and, you know, think about something that is going to be effective for you and you alone. So. My second goal area is, um, is related to making more frequent contact um, with joy, which will require me to engage more regularly in activities such as playing the piano and creating music, attending community functions, and reaching out to friends. So my kind of 10-year timeline, so in 10 years, I plan to be the person who is regularly playing piano and singing during a variety of community functions. So these people that, you know, come to community functions and they bring their guitar and they, you know, they're leading music. I highly value those people and I want to be one of those people. I'm not there yet, but in 10 years, I know that I, with, with work, I can be that person and I want to be that person. Um, in five years, I'll be regularly attending community functions. And in two years, a more reasonable timeline, I'll be reaching out regularly to friends near and far. And the four sub goals that I have in relation to these, um, these more long-term goals are to um, rejoin the ministry music group at the, our local church here and actively participate in practice and monthly performances during services. Um, so I don't regularly attend church services. However, I have found that this group of people that come together on a weekly basis and have a shared love of music and singing and um, inspiring others is a great opportunity for me to do a couple things, um, get more social in, in a way that initially was very uncomfortable because I had to put myself out there and, you know, join a group of people that I didn't really know and also play music that I wasn't very comfortable with. <laughs> um, just because I wasn't, you know, I hadn't practiced the piano in a long time. I've never really played with a group of people. Um, and so, you know, I did this for a while and then I left for a while because it got to the point where 
it, I was experiencing a lot of anxiety um, about my own personal performance and my own personal abilities. And so I, um, you know, I didn't want to be a part of that group. I didn't want to experience those feelings. Um, but now that I have actually, you know, I took, I, I had the opportunity to take a couple lessons over this past summer and then have been practicing more regularly, I'm feeling a lot, lot more confident in my own individual abilities. And so, and I value this activity greatly. And so I want to rejoin that activity um, and start to put myself out there again. Um, I want to, I will, you know, my goal is to regularly attend our weekly community soup night, which, in, which will include preparing a dish to share the day before. So that's going to take some planning and preparation on my part, which um, can be a challenge, but is something that I, you know, I want to be a part of that um, activity. And so I am setting a goal and will make a plan for making that happen for myself. Um, the third goal is that I will, when presented with an opportunity, take five minutes to sit and chat with a friend or acquaintance in the community in a meaningful way. So one of the things that I've noticed about myself is I have, you know, I tend to have very um, short and superficial interactions, um, which, you know, just, again, makes me sort of feel like I'm being fake and not living in accordance with my values. And so for me to be able to take five minutes and sit and actively listen and ask questions and engage, this is a skill that takes practice and something that is not very comfortable for me, but I know is important um, to do. So, which is why you can see that it's just five minutes. I don't, I'm, this, I'm not saying, you know, call up a random person and have an hour long conversation with them. No, five minutes, create a connection, be a human being, which, some, which sometimes is easier said than done. Um, but if, it, if it's important, if you care hard, you will work hard and you'll do what's necessary. Um, and then I also have set a goal for myself that I will send an individualized message once per week, again, setting, it, setting a goal that is reasonable and attainable um, to send a personalized or individualized message to a friend, either a phone call, a phone message, a text message, or a greeting card, um, something, some way to maintain um, connections with the, you know, the various friends in my life with whom I have fallen out of contact. Um, but value deeply and want to be, you know, I want those people to be there for me in, you know, 40 years when I'm, you know, pushing 80 and, um, you know, want me, want and need people in my life who, um, you know, who bring joy and who, with whom I can share a variety of experiences. Um, and lastly, the the goal that I've created that is in relation to social, uh, my social values and recreation is tied into realistic boundaries. And so, you know, I've, I've done a good job in my life for the most part of, um, you know, tackling my goals and accomplishments related to my career. But all of those other things that, you know, the social interactions and re recreational activities, I generally don't plan for, don't put them on my schedule, over schedule myself with um, work tasks. And so then I just don't have time. I don't have time for those other things. And so my goal is to create more realistic boundaries with, in regard to work tasks um, to make sure that I'm making time for um, those other important areas, such as social interactions, so building so time to build and facilitate social relationships, and to engage in recreation, which again, both of those things um, bring great joy to my life and re-energize me. So in 10 years, I plan to be able to fulfill all my obligations with in a set time frame and engage in regular recreation activities with family and friends. 
in five years, I plan to um, be regularly planning out my schedule a week in advance and completing a majority of the activities I had planned. Um, in two years, I um, plan to have mastered that I will, t um, you know, have the skills and abilities to tackle my to-do list more effectively and efficiently and make time at least once per month for recreational activities with my husband. So the goals that I have set in relation to that, you know, the more, um, the closer goal, the two-year goal is to um, keep a master list of all the things that need to be completed within the next three to six months that can be added to and reviewed regularly. On Sundays, I will create a list of all the things that need to be done within the week in addition to the things that I would like to do. So there's that, you know, must do's and want to's. Um, I will use the master list and weekly sub list to plan out my schedule for the upcoming week and calendar any other activities that are set in stone. So that's another challenge that I've had is not putting things on my calendar um, or having too many calendars all over the place or too many schedules. And so this is, you know, my effort to kind of consolidate everything and create a more um, structured process for myself. Um, so I can create more balance through more effective scheduling. Um, and at the end of every week, I set a goal to um, ref do a written reflection about what was completed and not completed on my to-do list. Um, and this is something that I've found helpful in the past because I was able to put in better context what I was doing well, the things I was struggling with, um, and um, some barriers to success, either not planning well enough or um, having my time hijacked or um, planning for planning to do too many things without consideration of all of the things that need, needed to be done. So essentially setting myself up for failure. Okay, so those were the, the goals that I set, um, the goals that I set for myself. And then each one of those areas has an action plan. And again, the action plan um, is related to the short and long-term goals, but are things that you can do, th things that I can do right now, today, within the next week, that will be um, steps towards accomplishing my short and long-term goals. And they will be things that will get me closer, you know, get me one or two steps closer to that end goal. And will also, um, you know, keep me oriented to my values. So keep me pointed in that compass direction in which I have said that I want to live my life. Um, so these are, again, these were pulled from previous exercises. And so I would encourage you to look back at the work that you've done and pull in, pull in some of those ideas and you can, you know, also add to them as needed. Um, and this is, this is one area that I want to, I'm going to be doing more work over the next week to really, um, clarify these action plans. So for my community goal, um, I'm, you know, I'm going to uh, begin taking a few minutes um, each day to reflect upon things that I've observed, you know, write in my journal, um, think about things that, things that I could do differently to advocate in a more effective way. Um, before I go into situations in which I'm going to need to advocate for myself or others, I will engage in some mindfulness exercises so I can be ready to um, continue on and stay on my path in, even in the presence of the barriers that come up, those, um, those thoughts and those, uh, thoughts and feelings that in the past have, um, diverted my, um, actions. Um, I will be, you know, I will make an effort to notice things in the moment and take 
small actions in the moment related to future conversations that need to happen or future actions that need to be happening. As I'm preparing for meetings, I will um, practice and rehearse those crucial conversations so that when I get into those situations, I will feel more comfortable and confident and fluent with what I'm doing and saying. Um, and then also if I see um, instances of others advocating for themselves or others, I will reinforce that with behavior specific praise. The small actions that I will um, and will am willing to take in regard to um, my creative and social goal is to carry my book of piano music with me so I can practice when the when the opportunity arises. I find myself in a room with a piano and a few minutes to kill. Um, I'll create a playlist with all the songs I'm learning so I can listen to it on my drives or while working, which I've already done. And this has been really awesome. Um, listen, my whole drive was li listening to the music and singing along, which was fantastic, especially since we've had some beautiful sunshiny days, um, which are the days I love to drive on the most. And um, I will, the action, another action I'm going to take is to embed two regularly, regular community activities within my schedule. Um, during times when I'm waiting for my next task, I will um, call a friend or message a friend rather than um, scrolling through um, social media or just looking mindlessly at emails. Um, and then if I see something that reminds me of somebody, I'll send them a private message and a picture with a message. Um, and then finally, in regard to the social and recreational goal, um, my actions that I, you know, am committed to taking in regard to this are to create a more clear and balanced schedule of regular like, activities, to plan out my weeks so I have a clear picture of my schedule so I can use my time more effectively and efficiently rather than kind of planning on the go. Um, I'll carry my planner with me at all times so I can reference to it, reference it. So if somebody asks me to do something, I'll have a quick, quick way to be able to say yes or no, or put something on the calendar. Um, I will calendar all my specific ob obligations so they're not hanging, not left hanging on my to-do list. And I will practice just saying no to things that are not in alignment with my values. So here's where, here's where the fun begins. <laughs> this is all, this is all fun at the end, in the end of the day. Um, but the execution plan. So for me, I find it most helpful to um, move from kind of, you know, these structured goals to some, you know, key actions. Um, I, you know, my process, the one what works best for me is to then kind of compartmentalize and those act, actual activities onto kind of a weekly schedule. So a general weekly schedule that will kind of be my framework on which I will be able to um, layer all of the other things that I want to do. Um, and this is something that I've, you know, I've had peaks and valleys in terms of performance where, you know, I'd have a really structured schedule and then it would fall off and then I, and I'd be like, okay, well, I'm, you know, I'm not getting things done because I don't have a structured schedule. So I'd, you know, try to climb back up, back up that mountain and then fall off again. Um, but I never really put it in like concrete written forms. So I am hopeful and hoping that this um, strategy will be more helpful for me. Just the process of doing it was helpful um, in kind of, you know, clarifying and um, parsing things out into their you know, different buckets. So it can become very overwhelming when you look at the, all of it together. So like, oh my gosh, there's all of these 500 things that I, that I want to do, that I can do, should be doing, you know, tell myself that I want to do in regard to my values. Um, and so it can become very overwhelming. But when you start to pull things apart and put them into the, you know, seven different buckets of the days of the week, um, it can, you know, things can become a lot more uh, streamlined. So uh, I've done and kind of gone through and created 
a mock weekly schedule. So on Sundays, I'm going to attend and play music, play music at the church service. I will reflect upon my past week and the barriers to task completion. I'll update my master to-do list and graph my data. I'll create a weekly li uh, list of weekly tasks, the must-dos and the want-tos. Um, I'll plan out my schedule and calendar any set activities. I'll process and post a FAFWA course videos and I will do something fun and relaxing um, with my husband. Okay, so these are, you know, it's kind of, sounds like a full day, but to me, this felt like the best day to, you know, take the week that just happened and recap and summarize, you know, what went well, what didn't do well, what can I do better in the future, and to think about and plan for the week coming up. On Monday, so Monday is a normal work day. I've got to, um, you know, do my regularly scheduled work for the school district. Um, I, you know, uh, will post blogs or videos or social posts for Afapwa. So this is where I'm doing my social and community connection. And I'll complete any um, prow prowesses our other our website development company business consultation. Um, so I'll complete any work that needs to be done on Mondays because that's when I decided that I, you know, I need to separate out these things. And this is the day that makes the most sense to, on which to do the, that work. Tuesday, so on Tuesday, I have my regularly scheduled job. This is the day that I, that I want to dedicate to reviewing um, exercises that have been completed and providing feedback to our members um, and then writing articles. So I, I uh, have, um, one of the other pieces of work that I do is I write articles and do the social media for our visitor website for the islands so of Discover POW. So I'll be writing my articles on Tuesdays. Um, on Wednesdays, I go to my normal job. I will, you know, do the same thing that I do on Mondays, post a blog, video, or social post for a FAPWA. Um, this is the day. So since I'm, I'm preparing for attending soup night on Thursdays, I need to prepare a dish on Wednesdays. Um, and then is also the day of uh, ministry music practice. Um, on Thursdays, I'll work, I will work my regular job, uh, prepare for a FAFWA course lessons and attend soup night or other social event. Um, Cause sometimes there's other things going on like game nights or um, barbecues. The Thursday is a popular night for those things to happen in our community. Um, on Friday, I don't work at the school district. We only Monday through Thursday. Um, so I will be doing, I do more work for AFAPWA and for the Chamber of Commerce. Um, and so I'll be posting, um, completing my final preparations for the lesson and completing my chamber work. And then on Saturday, I am teaching these lessons. And then the rest of the day is my time to rest and relax and rejuvenate and recuperate and do all the fun, you know, and good self-care um, things that, um, you know, I do a little bit throughout the week. And then Saturday is my big day just to like whew, decompress and take time for myself. And again, that doesn't work for everybody, but it works really well for me. Um, and then finally, we come to the progress monitoring section. And this is one that, you know, you are going to have to decide for yourself what is going to make the most sense. Um, what I'm going to suggest um, for myself is, you know, something that might work for you as well. Um, and the goal is to keep it simple but meaningful. So, so you can, you know, gather some information gather some data on yourself. What, you know, what did you accomplish? What did you not accomplish? Um, and then how close are you in alignment with your values? And so the two things that I'm going, I'm going to do or plan to do for my progress monitoring is to, um, at the end of every week on Sunday, when I'm doing my reflection, I'm going to count up from my master list, the number of tasks that were completed and graph that on a weekly cumulative tasks completed chart. Um, and then I am going to do a weekly rating of my values and reflect upon kind of where I'm at and where I, where I need to be um, or where I want to go. 
So that brings us to the end of um, my personalized strategic ac action plan, my piece up. So hopefully this was a helpful model to see what this looks like. You know, we talked about making sure that your plan is put on paper. No longer are we going to just have a nebulous idea of what we want to do or what we hope to do. We're just as we put together treatment plans for individuals, you're going to work, you know, we need to get comfortable putting together um, action plans and treatment plans for ourselves so we can be more focused and be more effective in our day to day actions. Okay. So the for the remainder of this lesson, I'm going to go I'm going to go quickly and just talk about the things that are going to be done on the back end within the dashboard as part of the exercises. So the first thing that you're going to do is look through again, read through the personalized strategic action plan and then provide a rating for each section on just, you know, on a scale of um, one to five, was it, you know, poor or was it excellent? Um, and then provide some positive feedback. And so, you know, this isn't me searching for compliments. This is a, um, a skill that needs to be developed because so many times, even though we're behavior analysts and we are really good a lot of times at providing positive reinforcement, um, to our clients that we work with, we're not always good, myself included, um, about providing positive feedback to others who, um, who we see in our lives. Um, and so it's going to be a time for you to practice really generating genuine, thoughtful, positive feedback on the individual plan section. And then comes the diagnostics feedback section. In this, you will um, provide structured feedback for improvement. So the way that this will look is you will provide a description of your individual observations, your interpretation or your reaction to the individual components, and specific instructions, or not instructions, but specific suggestions for improvement. And then finally, um, the third objective exercise will give you an opportunity to do some personal reflection for yourself so this can become more concrete and meaningful to you, but also to give yourself some practice in, in teaching and justifying the importance of this process to others to whom I hope you are going to be you know, reaching out and sharing this information and encouraging others to engage in similar processes. Um, so really starting to think about why PSAPs are important, why it's important to provide positive feedback, and why it's important to provide constructive feedback. So for the homework, so between now and um, next Saturday, so I will be reviewing all of the feedback that is received from the plan that I presented, and I will be revising my plan and making things more clear, um, adding components, making sure that the, this plan is going to be meaningful for me and my life. And so this is the first step to incorporate feedback make some revisions and you know create a more final draft of the plan and then i will you know over the next you know few weeks or months i'll be testing the plan i'll be working it i will be doing the things that i have said that i'm going to do um, and reflecting on that regularly and continuously revising that plan so for all of you out there what i would encourage you to do is to um, develop and submit your PSAP. And so, you know, so I have an opportunity to see it. And so, you know, I, I'll, I can provide feedback to you 
as well. Um, and think about how you would present this. So the original plan for the final session was, or the final lesson was for participants to share their individual personalized strategic plan. And I realize that this is, you know, due to the nature of these lessons, that's likely not going to be possible. So, you know, if it is possible, if you're able to come to the class next Saturday and present and share your individualized strategic plan, um, and that would be wonderful. That would be awesome. It would be a great opportunity for you to share with the rest of the community. If you can't do that, um, you know, it, that's obviously totally okay. But what I would also encourage you, what I would encourage you to do then is possibly share your PSAP document or components of it within the forum. Um, and this again will be an opportunity for you to begin sharing yourself, share your ideas, share your plans with others so you can, um, you know, get practice putting yourself out there. It's not comfortable, but it's an important part of the process. Um, you could also take a video of yourself. You don't necessarily have to share this, but do some of your own video feedback. Take a video of yourself describing and explaining the plan and provide yourself with some feedback. Watch it back and provide yourself with feedback. Or you could present your plan to another person in your life and ask them for their honest and open feedback to you on your plan so you can continue revising and um, continually improving the plan that you have for yourself. So with that, I am going to bid you all a good day and I Super, I'm super excited and, and to read your individualized action plans. All of the work that you've done over the past seven weeks has been so wonderful to read and, and really get to know you all much more deeply. And I hope that you are able to take what you've learned throughout the lessons and really start to incorporate these lessons deeply into your life so you can model for, your, for everybody in your family, in your community, in your immediate world, what it looks like, what it looks like to, to live a valued life, what it looks like to be continuously committed to improvement. So I thank you for your time and your energy and your effort. And I look forward to seeing you next week where we will have our final lesson of the course. We'll have our final draft of our personalized strategic action plans, which went then we will take and use as our guides, our guide, individualized guidebook to lead us through the rest of our days. So I will see you all on the other side.